welcome everyone to our solar photovoltaics course. This week we are having our 7th week lecture and today is our last module of the 7th week. Now uh, you have all known that for a single junction silicon solar cell or for that say any single junction solar cell the maximum efficiency we can achieve is 32 percent and this limit comes from the a thermodynamics limit called the Sockley quasar limit. Now, uh, the upshot of all this is that even if somebody made a very, very high efficiency or very high absorbing light absorbing material and let us say I optimize the morphology in the best possible way. So, that the charge transport and also the charge recombination is optimized to get a maximum efficiency, but still there is some limitation which comes intrinsically from the devices because of that we cannot go beyond a particular number. Now, people are thinking how to circumvent this, how to make a solar cell with a more efficiency. Let us say for example, like if you wanted to have some practical applications or if you need a uh, larger power output, then uh, somewhat like 15 percent or 20 percent whatever we get from a single junction solar cell is not sufficient. So, in that case what we can do, we can stack many solar cells together. Now, uh, whenever we say that we can stack many solar cells together, then we can either stack similar kind of solar cell like we can stack perovskite solar cell or we can stack silicon and perovskite together. Now, this kind of configuration is called a tandem solar cell. In today's lecture, we will discuss about the tandem solar cell. So, this is a very unique form of solar cell consisting of two or more subcells which together convert more of the sunlight spectrum into electricity and therefore increase the overall cell efficiency. So, just as we mentioned that if you have a single solar cell from a amorphous silicon solar cell let us say we get 12 to 15 percent efficiency and we know that from a perovskite solar cell we can get 15 to 20 percent efficiency. But uh, in some way if we can make a stacking of a silicon and perovskite together then we can utilize the advantage of the silicon as well as the perovskite solar cell. So, this kind of geometry is will be called a tandem solar cell or silicon perovskite tandem. The sub cells are connected on top of one another and can be constructed from different solar cell materials or from the same family of solar cell material. Now, uh, these two different components of the uh, hybrid solar cell or tandem solar cell, they can be same solar cell material. For example, you can take two silicon solar cell or they can be from different family members like you can take a silicon and also you can take an organic solar cell or you can take a silicon, you can take a perovskite solar cell. Tandem cells are effectively a stack of different solar cells on top of each other. By arranging them like this, we can capture more energy from the sun. Tandem cells are an attractive option for achieving high efficiency. Now, look at this figure where we are showing this uh, tandem solar cell where the direction of illumination is through the uh, front electrode or the transparent electrode and you see that here there are two different kinds of solar cell has been sandwiched. One, the bottom cell is a silicon or 6 base solar cell and then the top cell is a perovskite solar cells. Now, we put a tunnel junction in between them and it has been sandwiched between these two electrode rear electrode and transparent electrode. Now, similarly we can make a bottom solar cell by a silicon 6 base solar cell, then we can put a transparent electrode. So, basically this whole unit is one solar cell and we put a spacer and put another layer of a perovskite solar cell. So, basically there are two different kinds of solar cell A and B with a spacer layer that has been attached together. And in the third case you see that here there is a perovskite solar cell at the bottom and in the top also there is a perovskite solar cells, but also you can use bulk heterojunction solar cell. So, basically we can use either same type of solar cell like this one is an example of B and B. So, in the both in the bottom layer and in the top layer we are using perovskite solar cell. And in the fourth case we have this BAG or perovskite solar cell and another is also a perovskite solar cell, but there is a spacer between them two. So, this is a B and this is also B but there is a spacer unit between these two. And here in this case like you know this is A and this is B. 
So, uh, the what is the uh, difference between these four different architecture is the following. In one case in the figure number 1 a, so whatever we are seeing here that two different kinds of solar cell like silicon or six solar cell and perovskite solar cell, they have been sandwiched in a same solar cell geometry in between there is a tunnel junction. In this case the same six or the perovskite solar cell or let us uh, first uh, like you know take this example in the figure number 2, here the 6 solar cell and the perovskite solar cell both are two different material solar cell, but they are two individual solar cell which have been attached by a special layer. Now also it is possible to make a tandem cell from the same materials. For example, here you see that both of this case we have a perovskite material and the number 3 and 4 the only difference is that in number 3 the both the solar cells have been sandwiched in between a tunnel junction and here this is two different solar cell made of the perovskite which have been sandwiched with each other. So, these are the four different possible architectures or configuration possible for a tandem solar cell. Now, this is for a representative example. For uh, generalization, we can take any of the solar cell configurations and we can make either silicon uh, perovskite tandem or we can make silicon BHZ tandems. Of course, we have to uh, look for the energetics and charge transfer properties and we have to see that we get a finally an optimized morphology uh, because the final objective is of making tandem solar cell is to improve the efficiency. So, uh, while constructing this process one thing has to be kept in the mind that the charge transport property should be optimum. Now, uh, a very common example of the tandem solar cell is a perovskite silicon tandem cells here. As uh, for example, you can look at this uh, device structure here. In the top solar cell, we have a perovskite top cell, and in the bottom, we have a silicon bottom cell. Now, there are two different solar cells. This is a silicon solar cell, right, and this is a perovskite solar cell. And these two solar cells have been connected by an optical coupling. Now, how does this optical coupling has been done? This optical coupling has been done through a spacer material which allows the light to transmit completely and which couples the electromagnetic wave or the light which is coming from the like bottom solar cell or from the top solar cell towards the bottom direction. So, band gap of the CH3 NH3 lead perovskite is 1.56 electron volt and band gap of the crystalline silicon is 1.1 electron volt. So, idea is that if we make a tandem, so we can utilize the two different band gap properties of the two different materials because like 1.56 corresponding to a particular wavelength of the absorption and 1.1 electron volt will correspond to a particular wavelength of the absorption. For example, in the figure here we are showing here like once you use the, use the perovskite solar cell, so the, the visible spectrum has been fully covered. But when you use a silicon solar cell not only the visible but NIR spectrum is also covered. So, that means in the tandem case both the visible and the NIR spectrum is completely covered. So, tandem solar cell is illuminated through the perovskite solar cell like you know we are illuminating it through here and perovskite absorbs the visible light and crystalline silicon cell near infrared light and parasitic absorption in the top cell has to be as small as possible. Perovskite tandem progress and scope, uh, solar photovoltaic installations have grown at a compound rate of 44 percent per annum for the past 10 years faster than any other energy technology in the world. This growth has largely been with crystalline silicon PV modules which now cost less than 0 0.50 US dollar per watt following Swarson's law for 4 decades reducing 22 percent in price for every doubling of the cumulative installed capacity. The practical efficiency limits of silicon solar cell are being rapidly approached by global manufacturers and whilst there are pathways towards 25 percent module efficiency, they are clear price motivation for even higher efficiency beyond the one junction limit. So, again like in a silicon solar cell uh, since it is kind of a mature technology, we can even uh, go up to an efficiency of 25 percent in a module level, but when you go to 25 percent uh, efficiency in module level consequently the cost becomes also very high in a single junction solar cell. So, the ultimate objective is that to still retain the efficiency high, but even instead of a single junction if you have a multi junction solar cell, but if the cost becomes lower then that will be beneficial for us. Now, inorganic organic metal halide perovskites are the first thin film high band gap and earth abundant material to demonstration solar cell performance capable of increasing the efficiency of silicon solar cell beyond 26 percent in a tandem configuration and raise the possibility of an all thin film tandem solar cell with greater than 30 percent efficiency providing the first step towards the true third generation photovoltaics. 
So, uh, since in the silicon solar cell we can get an efficiency greater than 25 percent in module, but along with this if we use perovskite material and since we know that perovskite provides us some unique advantage like large band gap or tunable band gap and absorption coefficient is also very high. So, if we combine these two different kind of solar cell then it is possible to reach an efficiency beyond 25 percent like 26 percent or 28 percent even greater than 30 percent efficiency. The final assessment of any energy technology is its levitated cost of electricity. So, basically uh, the efficiency and the cost relation is very very important. So, we can increase the efficiency, but for making a highly efficient solar cell if the cost of the production also increase very very highly then it is not a very feasible technology. So, uh, wherever making the solar cell we have to also keep in mind of the production process. So, calculated by dividing the total annualized cost of the system by the annual electricity produced over the system lifetime. For a photovoltaic module it is important or it is proportional to the cost of the system and inversely proportional to both module efficiency and system lifetime. These are the three main performance indicating in the PV research. So, first is the cost of the system when you make a PV module. So, the PV module the cost of the module is directly proportional and then it depends on the module efficiency and also the system lifetime like one installed how long it will last. So, these three factors like you know I, I said them like forms a golden triangle one is the efficiency another is the lifetime and another is the cost. So, whenever uh, any solar cell comes to a module part then for any kind of PV manufacturer they looks for this triangle. So, what is the cost of this solar cell? What is the like you know lifetime? or once installed in ambient condition how long it will last and also what will be the efficiency of this solar cell. So, these three parameters have to optimize simultaneously before bringing a technology into the market. Regarding system cost the actual solar cell itself compromise only 40 percent of the total analyzed cost of an installed PV system. The remaining 60 percent is due to balance of system expenses which includes the cost of inverters, wearing and installations. Efficiency improvements however directly reduce the levelized cost by increasing the annual electricity produced. Similarly, increasing system lifetime directly decrease the annualized cost of electricity. These are the motivations for research into robust durable solar cells with efficiencies beyond the one junction limit. They form the foundations for the widespread interest in the perovskite tandem. The first perovskite tandem solar cells were published in October 2014 in a two terminal 2T two tandem configuration where the top and bottom cells are electrically connected in series with a perovskite CGT SSE or CGTS tandem with efficiency of 4.4 percent. So, the first effort of making a tandem solar cell with perovskite was not with the silicon, but with CGTS based solar cell. So, we have taken a perovskite along with the CGTS and that solar cell gives us an efficiency of 4.4 percent not very high. These were quickly followed with four terminal perovskite tandem solar cells where top and bottom cells are independently electrically connected with bottom cells of crystalline silicon and SIG solar cell. By the end of 2015 the record 40 perovskite tandem solar cell has a efficiency that is higher than the record perovskite single junction solar cell reaching 25.2 percent in 2016 with the cell fabricated by Warner et al. Now, uh, when we make a two terminal devices then the efficiency value was limited to that 4.4 percent, but when we go for a four terminal devices where like you know the two devices were connected in the series and then by optimizing the device parameters this Warner's group in 2015 they have reported an efficiency which crossed the single junction perovskite solar cell efficiency that is 25.2 percent. The current record for a two terminal perovskite tandem cell is with a perovskite silicon tandem that is at 23.6 percent. So, now instead of the six solar cell if we use silicon as one of the component of the tandem then the efficiency increased to 23 percent. Recently surpassing the published 21.2 percent from a perovskite silicon tandem fabricated by Warner et al in 2015. So, even uh, this silicon uh, perovskite tandem solar cell has the potential of crossing the efficiency of almost any single junction solar cell. Now, uh, this chart we have uh, also discussed earlier uh, in the beginning of the lecture when we talked about the different generations of the solar cell. Uh, here we are uh, showing the efficiency revolutions of the solar cell and as you can see in the y axis we have the efficiency in percentage and the x axis is the year. So, uh, although it has been shown until 2017, so you can see that 
the perovskite single junction solar cell the efficiency is increasing. But what about like you know the fourth terminal silicon perovskite solar cell? Let us look at this graph. So, you see that the steep of the curve is very very high. So, the efficiency has been reported by an EPFL group at 25.2 percent. Okay. So, similarly like you know I mean uh, this graph is showing a two terminal single silicon perovskite tandem, then there are four terminal six perovskite tandem and then there are two terminal silicon perovskite terminal tandem. Tandem configurations, uh, tandem solar cells allow higher efficiency than the single junction devices by absorbing high energy solar photons in a higher band gap top cell material where it can generate photo current with higher voltage than the underlying solar cell with lower band gap but broader absorption coefficient. So, usually the top uh, solar cell is a high band gap material. So, what is the uh, advantage of using a high band gap material? Like uh, if I have a perovskite silicon tandem, then we know that perovskite has a higher band gap than the silicon. So, we will put the perovskite as a top layer. So, the advantage is that uh, they can absorb the high energy phot solar photons. And in the in the bottom layer, like you know, we put a uh, if the high energy solar photons is, is absorbed, then high photo voltage is also uh, or high photo current is also generated, right? And then the lower material in this case of silicon perovskite, silicon has a lower band gap 1.1 electron volt, like in comparison to the perovskite. So, we put the silicon as a bottom layer which can uh, absorb the material with higher absorption coefficient. So, basically the idea is that we can cover all the electromagnetic spectrum both the visible range as well as the near IR range. Okay. So, there are four main tandem solar cell configuration we have already uh, shown you the, the figures of all these four with varying degrees of optical and electrical independence. So, the parameters here is the optical and electrical independence. Now, you remember like you know when we uh, discuss about the four different configuration. So, uh, sometimes we put a tunnel junction sometimes we put a spatial layer. So, what is the difference here between a tandem uh, between a tunnel junction and a tandem spatial layer? So, the difference is their optical and electronic coupling. So, based on this optical and electronic coupling since we have two different kind of material. So, that means to different dielectric constant. So, it is very very important to couple the light from one of the solar cell to the another solar cell. Four terminal configuration compromise top and bottom cells that are independently connected. Both cells are required to be complete device fabricated with front and rear electrode which are then connected externally to combine the top and bottom cell power output. So, in a four terminal devices the top terminal and the bottom terminal is to complete devices and then which is finally connected to two different bottom and top connect solar cell. Four terminal tandem solar cells are unconstrained by current matching and having achieved the highest perovskite tandem efficiency to the date for a perovskite single crystal silicon it is almost 25.2 percent. And four terminal tandem include designs where longer wavelength sunlight passes through the top cell to the bottom cell or reflected to an adjacent bottom cell. Uh, look at this uh, the device diagram of a four terminal uh, tandem solar cell. You see here there is a perovskite uh, tandem here uh, the light is falling from the top and then the bottom there is an another solar cell is that. So, this is a complete device the top one is a complete devices right and uh, so the, the load it is running or the efficiency it is giving let us say it is P1 and the bottom solar cell that is an another independent solar cell and that is also connected with an external load and the efficiency it is giving is P2. So, P1 and P2 and we can think about there are two equivalent circuit which is connected by a series resistance. So, the total efficiency will be P T is equal to P1 plus P2 whereas, in a two terminal devices you see that there is a uh, perovskite top cells is there and perovskite like in you know, a bottom is a tandem cell, but both of them has been sandwiched by a recombination layer. So, there is a difference between these two figures. In one case this is an individual solar cell, this is another individual solar cell and we connect them externally. Here this the perovskite top layer and the bottom tandem solar cell they are sandwiched with a recombination layer and one contact we take from here and another contact we take from here. Okay. But here we are taking one contact from here, one contact from here, one contact from here, one contact from here. So, this is actually an individual solar cell, this is an individual solar cell and finally, we are combining the efficiency of the two solar cell. But here this two solar cell one of them we are using as a top electrode and another one we are using as a bottom electrode. So, there is a significant difference between the configurations of this four terminal and two terminal devices. So, we are also showing the reflective mode like if the perovskite is used as a top cell the light can falls on here then it is also possible the light the reflect and then couple to the bottom tandem solar cells. 
Also, there is a possibility of the light to transmit through here. So, the light can be coupled either through the transmission or through the reflections. Now, series parallel tandem or SPT configurations which is shown in the third figure combines strings of top and bottom cell separately before connection of the voltage match strings in parallel providing a practical method for combining the two shell power outputs at similar performance to four terminal configurations in annual energy yield. The most desirable and challenging configuration is that of series connected monolithic tandems figure B desirable because they allow both simpler electrical connections and omit the need for rear and front electrodes for the top and bottom cell respectively. Challenges to fabricate efficient 2T device include current matching between the top and bottom cells is very very important. If I have a 2T device or two terminal devices, so it is very important to have a current matching between the two and bottom cells, top and bottom cells. Fabrication of the recombination layers with minimum loss between the cells and optical management within the tandem. So, if I use uh, two terminal devices, basically we have to use a recombination layer between the top and the bottom solar cell. Now, the recombination layer as the name suggests it is supposed to do the recombination. So, we have to use the recombination layer, but also we have to make sure the recombination loss is less as possible and at the same time the optical coupling should be very very higher. Now, high efficiency perovskite cells for four terminal tandem devices are typically fabricated on ITO glass substrate with multi layered electron transport charge selective layer, perovskite absorber layer consisting methyl ammonium or formaldehyde lead iodide spirometed as a whole conducting material, moly trioxide buffer layer and ITO top contact with metallized grid. So, we are using ITO as a bottom contact and also a metallized ITO grid as a top contact. Four terminal thin film tandem efficiency records are for a perovskite 6 solar cell it is 22.1 percent, 20.3 percent for perovskite perovskite based on the formalidian cesium. There are two double cation we are using here and then we are using two different metal SN and lead and it was an iodine based devices and FACGM lead iodine bromine systems and which has an efficiency of 25.2 percent for a MAPI crystalline silicon solar cell. Now, we look at a four terminal perovskite tandem cells. So, here like you know as I said that uh, there is a glass layer and then this is ITO layer ok and then we put the perovskite the active layer between a PCBM layer which acts like an electron acceptor and also a spirometed layer and finally, there is a MOX coated ITO layer. So, if I take a cross sectional ACM image the different layers is showing here this is the perovskite and this is the SNO2 or PCBM layer ITO P dot PSS and then again uh, we are using another perovskite with 1.2 electron volt and C6TB6 with here we are using gold uh, the sorry the here we are using the silver and here we are using the ITO. So, basically this is the two different perovskite we are using one is 1.8 electron volt perovskite one is 1.2 electron volt perovskite. Now, we know to make a perovskite solar cell let us say for the top solar cell this is the first solar cell. So, we have an ITO layer and then P dot PSS right then the perovskite which is a band gap of 1.2 electron volt then C60 and the BCP and then the AG layer. So, that is a PIN geometry of a perovskite solar cell. Now, you look at the bottom layer here ITO and then nickel oxide then 1.8 electron volt perovskite then SNO2 or PCBM we use and finally, we are using this ITO level the second ITO level which is acting like a connecting level and also as a top electrode of the bottom solar cells ok. So, now this two solar cells have been now connected with each other. What about two terminal perovskite tandem solar cell? The monolithic perovskite tandem record is currently 23.6 percent with efficiency certified by National Renewable Energy Laboratory NREL though with unpublished cell structure at the time of the publication. The cell recently overtook the previous perovskite silicon 2T record of 21.2 percent with a silicon heterojunction cell as the bottom cell having an indium doped zinc oxide recombination layer between the P type amorphous hole conducting layer from the silicon cell and an electron conducting layer compromising a blend of polyethylamine and polyethylene C60 butyline acid methyl ester PCBM. The two terminal perovskite organic efficiency record is 16 percent instead of perovskite instead of silicon if I use a perovskite organic solar cell like perovskite BHJ tandem then the efficiency is 16 percent. So, that is for the two terminal perovskite perovskite is 18.1 percent and two terminal perovskite 6 is 10.9 percent and two terminal perovskite castorite efficiency record is 4.4 percent. The organic perovskite and perovskite tandems 
both employ fullerene based electron transport layers for the high band gap perovskite material. Now, if the band gap increase then we use fullerene based acceptor as one of the charge transport layer. In addition to the detailed layer architecture efficient two terminal tandem requires close matching of current between the top and bottom cells. This is achieved through careful optical design of the integrated structure and sensitive control of the absorption layer thickness often to within tens of nanometers. So, not only the band gap matching, but optical coupling is also very very important because we have to make sure that there is no recombination loss or also we have to make sure whatever the light or photo current which have been generated from the first layer that efficiently coupled with the second layer. Now, uh, if we look at the efficiency progress and some of the limits of that, the theoretical efficiency limit for a tandem solar cell under unconcentrated sunlight that is m 1.5 g spectrum is 47 percent. That is markedly high than the Sockley quasar limit of 31 percent for a single junction solar cell under unconcentrated sunlight. So, you see that uh, the theoretical limit for a tandem solar cell is 47 percent, but the Sockley quasar limit for a single junction solar cell is 31 percent. So, it is possible to reach an efficiency of much higher than the single junction solar cell in a tandem solar cell. For both the 4 and 2 terminal tandem contour maps, we see a broad peak in the theoretical maxima. 4 terminal tandem efficiency peak is at 47 percent for a top bottom cell band gap pairing 1.62 electron volt and 0.95 electron volt and for a 2 terminal devices the maximum theoretical efficiency possible is 39 percent. If we use two different material one having a band gap of 1.72 electron volt another having a band gap of 1.14 electron volt, but efficiencies within 10 percent of the peak can be found with plus minus 0 0.01 electron volt either side of the peak in both directions. So, the reduced peak to T efficiency of 39 percent compared to the 4 terminal value of 47 percent is due to the course modeling of the gallium arsenide as the top cell material of the 2T tandem with non ideal short circuit or the uh, intrinsic current geo through the train for perovskite cells remains the same. So, uh, if I use a 2 terminal devices the theoretical maximum efficiency is less than a 4 terminal devices and the reason behind that uh, we use a gallium arsenide uh, layer on the top where there is a loss of the light in 2 terminal devices, but still whether it is a 2 terminal or a 4 terminal the efficiency is still higher than a maximum theoretical limit of a single junction solar cell. We see particularly low sensitivity for 2 terminal tandems when the bottom cell thickness is allowed to be varied for current matching. Connecting some modules of 2 terminal tandems also afford greater flexibility in cell band gap choice with appropriate combinations matching performance of 4 terminal independently connected devices. Now, uh, here we are looking a contour map of a 4 terminal and a 2 terminal devices. You see that uh, the 4 terminal theoretical tandem efficiency as a function of the cell design with overlay of the selected perovskite tandem solar cell efficiency record holders. So, if I put a bottom cell band gap here and the y axis is the top cell band gap. So, in a 40 cell in often it is very very high the contour map is showing that this efficiency contour is in a higher region than comparison to the other case. Now, there is possible that you know I mean if we use uh, MOLLE like in MAPBI 3 like CS3 NS3 lead iodide solar cell. So, and if you use like you know uh, FSCPI BR solar cell. So, as we go from one to the another band if we change the or tune the band gap. So, this contour map is showing that the efficiency can be tuned over a very broad range. Now, the theoretical efficiency contour maps for varying top and bottom cell band gaps provide incentive and instruction for further optimizations of the perovskite materials. Current record efficiency overlay on the graph are less than 60 percent of their theoretical maxima. Even allowing for unavoidable optical and electrical loss in non theoretical system there is a significant space for further improvement. Well, I mean uh, I know that or uh, each of us know that I mean uh, so in a tandem solar cell apart from the material design or material architecture the optical spacing that plays a very important role. So, that is why it is not always possible to the reach the theoretical maximum efficiency limit. So, there is a limit we can go because of that, but still like you know by changing the band gap by doing a morphology optimization by doing a combinational approach of different cationic site and anionic site in the perovskite along with a multi junction silicon solar cell it is always possible to improve the efficiency further and further. So, there is a scope of improvement with conservative extrapolation of the historical progress of the perovskite efficiencies over the past decade we expect a 4 terminal perovskite single tandem solar cell beyond the break even efficiency of 26 percent to be achieved in the laboratory by the year of 2020 within 2 terminal perovskite solar cell following by 2025. So, uh, if we if we look at the trend 
the way the perovskite solar cell has been revolutionized within the last 5 6 years. So, if we follow the same trend it is very much possible that the efficiency of the a perovskite silicon tandem can reach a much higher number very soon. But there are also some limits of course, perovskite perovskite 4 terminal tandem efficiency are expected to surpass record perovskite single junction efficiency before 2020 and with 2T efficiency greater than 26 percent expected before 2030. There are a lot of research groups which are now working on this area. Now, uh, what about the transparent contacts and the recombination layer for the perovskite tandems because we are talking again and again about this uh, recombination layers and we say that optical and electrical coupling plays a very important role in perovskite devices. Now, there are two critical requirements for transparent contacts and recombination layers in a tandem devices. One is the high transmittance, so the light should be able to pass without any obstacle and second is that minimal electrical losses. So, the electrical loss should be also be minimum. So, first is an optical properties, second is an electrical properties. Now, the two are interrelated and the choice of material depends on tandem configuration, layer sensitivity to various deposition methods and the choice of adjacent charge selective transparent layer or transport layer. For transparent contacts, the material requirements also vary according to the ability to metallize a nano narrow grid on top of the contact layer. Now, since we are using in both case the ITU as a top and bottom contact, only we are putting a metallized grid on the top. So, basically we have to choose a contact a transparent contact in such a way that we will be able to evaporate or we will be able to deposit a very narrow grid on the top contact. Now, the top contact of a tandem solar cell must display excellent transparency across the whole solar spectrum. For a 4 terminal tandem, the rear contact of the top cell and the front contact of the bottom cell need only be transparent for sub band gap light from the near infrared onwards. The choice of material for each contact is dependent on a number of factors including band gap alignment, temperature impact sensitivity of the underlying cell layers and location in the tandem stack. Each of the record silicon, six CGTS and perovskite perovskite tandem solar cells employ sputter deposited indium doped tin oxide as either one or both of the top contact and recombination layer. So, in both of these cases we use ITO as well as a top contact and bottom contact also as a special layer or as a recombination layer. When used as a substrate contact or when deposited on top of a robust inorganic material layers, sputtered oxide are simple to incorporate in a tandem devices. However, deposition on top of a perovskite or polymer layers requires the use of a buffer layer to protect from the high impact energies of the sputtering. So, uh, if in the top contact perovskite layer, if we put an ITO and then if we sputter actually the ITO on an inorganic material, so there is a possibility of the penetration. So, the device can be damaged. So, we have to be very, very uh, careful while, while sputtering the ITO on top of the inorganic electrode or inorganic material uh, for the second uh, component of the tandem solar cell. Now, the typically the coated requirement of transparent conductors for thin film solar cells is a sheet resistance of 10 ohm per square centimeter and transmittance of 80 percent for wavelengths between 400 to 1100 nanometer. This requirement has recently been re revisited in light of the ability to routinely deposit narrow metal grids on top of the thin transparent conductors dramatically reducing their effective sheet resistance up to several orders of magnitude with little cost to transparency less than 5 percent. We present the transmittance and seed resistance of state of the art transparent contacts in the next figure both as fabricated and with their predicted efficient seed resistance and metallization with a gold grid consisting of fingers 100 nanometer thickness and 35 micron wide spaced with a 1 millimeter pitch running along the length of the cell to lossless bus bars 1 centimeter apart. So, let us uh, look at the figure uh, in the next diagram. This dimension follow those in Dulong's et al's and Jacob et al's paper and represent the present capability of industrially relevant deposition techniques for solar cell manufacturing. Now, you see that uh, if we look at this uh, graph, so there are so many parameters to optimize. Now, we can use ITO, we can use graphene layer, we can use thin metal, we can use IGO or we can use the silver nano wires. Now, if we use the different different layers, so what the properties is going to change? The transmittance and also the seed resistance. So, we have to make sure the contact has a very, very high transmittance over the whole solar spectrum and at the same time the seed resistance should be very, very low. So, that the series resistance or the series recombination should be very, very low. And on the right hand side again like you know we are showing that as a function of the effective seed resistance. So, if you change it from 8 to 10 to 12 to 14, you see that how does the transmission is also changing for it is the same kind of material. So, while designing the material, 
So, it depends upon for example, if I have a metal uh, if I have an like in a top contact of ITO and if I have to put a inter digitated like this kind of narrow finger electrode on the top. So, it depends upon what is the width of this finger electrode, what is the spacing between the successive electrode, what is the length between electrode. So, all of these things has to be optimized before getting a high efficiency solar cell. Again the standalone transmittance of the transparent contacts is shown in the following figure like uh, here the transmittance versus wavelength is showing for a graphene layer, for a silver nanoware, IGO, ITO and thin metal layer. Similarly, the transmittance versus wavelength layer is showing for a different different types of ITO, AGNO, graphene, ITO and IGO layer. So, you can use graphene also like as a as a conducting electrode or as a transparent electrode, you can use silver nanoware, you can use IGO layer, you can use IOH layer, you can use ITO layer or even you can use a very very semi transparent thin metallic layer also. And if we use different different layers, so how the transmittance will be going to vary with the seed resistance that we have to record by doing an absorption spectroscopy and corresponding the resistivity measurement. Now, the recombination layers for two terminal tandems amongst the most challenging layers to design and fabricate a two terminal tandems are the recombination layers between the top and bottom cell. Bridging between the two different cell architectures, the layers must efficiently recombine electrons and holes with minimum loss of voltage and minimum reduction in transparency. Obviously, when you put a transparent layer between the top contact and the bottom solar cell or top solar cell and bottom solar cell, we have to make sure that the transparency loss is as minimum as possible and the current or voltage loss at the interface is as minimum as possible. While the requirements for resistivity are most as strict for recombination layer as for contacts, recombination layer must still provide low electrical resistance to charge carriers with excellent transparency to the underlying bottom cell, a factor which we have already discussed. Now, silicon perovskite tandem solar cells typically employ recombination layer based on a transparent conductive oxide with hole and electron charge selective layers. The two terminal silicon perovskite tandem fabricated using a intermediate recombination layer of indium doped zinc oxide also or sputtered on the top of a P doped uh, amorphous silicon layer of the heterojunction silicon solar cell or also this can be used by a TCO silicon tunneling configuration. So, there are different different configuration possible for making four terminal or two terminal devices that is what we are describing here. Similarly, the recombination layer for the perovskite perovskite two terminal tandems fabricated by an another group which use the ITO with SNO2 PCBM as an electron transport layer. The ITO layer they form a physical barrier between the deposition to allow the spin coating of period PSS layer and spurred ITO layer is also used for the recombination layer of the record kestrite and 6 perovskite tandem solar cell with CDS via chemical bath depositions and then period PSS a hole transporting material was spin coated forming an electron and hole selective layer. So, the band gap matching is also very very important. Now, what are the efficient or whatever the ideal candidate materials for making a tandem solar cell? While the indium dot metal oxides are currently the material of choice for perovskite tandems, a range of candidate materials are available and deserve further attention for further commercial devices that avoid the use of indium. Now, there are several transparent conductive oxide can be used. For example, ITO or indium doped tin oxide glass substrate, hydrogenated indium oxide, doped zinc oxide, buffer layer for the sputtered transparent conductive oxide layer or solution processed oxide nanoparticle. Organic and solid state charge selective layers, thin metal, silver nanowares and graphene. Graphene is also nowadays used very very efficiently to make a transparent conductive layer. Now, uh, uh, however, the tandem involving compound semiconductors on top of thin film silicon would not make a great deal of sense. There would be no compelling reason for using silicon in such a device, but rather compound material similar to that in overlying device. That is a famous quote by Martin Green. So, what he has mentioned here that neglecting the current market dominance of the silicon photovoltaics, perhaps an interesting question for the photovoltaic research communities when perovskite become efficient and stable enough to be included in a silicon perovskite tandem. Would they be efficient and stable enough to either be more viable or cheaper than silicon solar cell as a standalone PV technology or have the sufficient development of lower and higher band gap perovskite materials for perovskite perovskite tandems to be more viable cheaper than silicon perovskite tandem. Now, this is still an open question whether perovskite perovskite tandem is more uh, viable option or perovskite silicon tandem will be a more viable option. Following the key developments in the low band gap perovskite, we explore what might be the expected of future perovskite tandem solar cell under the modest assumptions. 
So, here if we take a perovskite perovskite tandem you see that how does the, the, the current is changing with the band gap. So, if we go from 1.5 to a larger band gap, so the efficiency with the top cell and bottom cell it is decreasing right. So, uh, so it depends of a suitable combination like for example, here the perovskite top cells and perovskite bottom cells so far that was used as a tandem solar cell. But in between if we also use a perovskite mill set, perovskite mid set with a variable band gap then like there are 3 perovskite devices in my tandem solar cell then it is possible to cover the whole electromagnetic spectrum provided like you know we have a suitable band gap matching and the cells are very very stable. So, we employ a bottom of the CH3 NH3 lead iodide with band gap of 1.16 electron volt to model tandem and triple layer perovskite solar cells. Under this simple assumptions we find that for a potential for a 2D perovskite tandem even can reach beyond 30 percent 31 percent efficiency. And a gain of only 2 percent absolute efficiency is found for a 3 layer cell compared to a 2 layer assumption limited strongly by the 95 percent transparency of the Lee combination layer. Now, instead of 2 percent 2 layer devices if we go to the 3 layer devices there is an increase in efficiency. But there is also still a problem is that once we increase the number of the uh, solar cells so basically we have an interface. So, at the interface there is a recombination. So, now this recombination or the transparency loss also has to be considered while increasing the different layers of the perovskite solar cell. For example, this graph is showing a triple layer current density and here the corresponding triple layer current efficiency is shown here. Now, what is the future of this field? Now, the extraordinary progress of the perovskite single junction solar cell has been accompanied by the remarkable progress in the perovskite tandem solar cell. After the discovery of the perovskite tandem solar cell now people are thinking it is possible to bring in the market and perhaps it can compete with the silicon module. Just as organometal halide perovskite solar cell has risen from 4 percent to 22 percent or nowadays I mean today's number is 23 percent now and is this number is changing every other days. So, starting below from 14 percent to reach 25 percent in 2016 that we have observed in the case of tandem. So, probably we can be optimistic that very soon we will be able to reach 35 percent or even 40 percent. The efficiency for tandem solar cells are not constrained by the single junction limit and we expect the trend to be increasing efficiency to continue in the decades to come. Predicting a perovskite silicon port terminal tandem devices to break the break even efficiency of 26 percent and two terminal devices by 2030. So, uh, now it is possible to increase the efficiency even more than 30 percent. Perovskite perovskite tandem present the first real candidate for a third generation photovoltaic solar cell beyond the one junction limit compromising the earth abundant material with the ability to be manufactured at a large scale. They have dramatically increased the efficiency and also further improvements in the low band gap materials along with the optimizations of the recombination layer can further improve the efficiency beyond 30 percent. Similarly, we expect the perovskite perovskite tandem to overcome the efficiency of 26 percent or to reach to 20 or 30 percent by 2030. While laboratory cell efficiency are expected to be very high, but when we make a module the module efficiency is always less from the laboratory efficiency. So, while we make a module then we have to consider the various factors. Perovskite silicon tandem will have to meet the performance guarantee of the silicon panels of 80 percent performance after 25 years. Yes. So, again remember the triangle not only the efficiency or not only the cost, but the lifetime also is very very important. Now, silicon has passed the test like you know silicon keeps its efficiency or its performance more than 80 percent for a long period of time 25 percent. So, the silicon perovskite tandem also has to pass this test. So, it once installed it should be also able to keep its performance for a quite a long time without any loss of the efficiency. So, or without any loss of performance that is also a significant factors need to be optimized before commercialization of this technology. Now, following areas are interest and the target for the future research maybe some of you are might be interested. One is the reduction of the VOC value loss in potential for high band gap perovskite material to develop efficient perovskite semiconductors with a band gap less than the silicon that is 1.1 electron volt and then fabricate compatible transparent conductors and recombination layer to, to develop graphene based transparent layer and then wavelength selective light trapping layer and perovskite compounds that can serve as a selective transport and as well as as a recombination layer in a multi junction perovskite solar cell. So, there are some critical issues also there. First, this fabrication of the compatible recombination layer with minimum voltage loss is one of the problem and we do not need to use the indium in the future. Control of light with the device including the transparency of the top electrode and finally, the cell stability that allows a performance guarantee of 80 percent output for a long period of time at least for 25 years so that it can be compatible with the silicon solar cell efficiency. So, there is a room for development is there and uh, 
So, we are going in a right direction. So, we have seen that efficiency revolutions of a perovskite solar cell. Starting from 4 percent, we have able to reach to 23 percent. Silicon solar cell is already given 15 to 20 percent. So, a conjugation of a silicon and perovskite can easily bring the technology to 35 percent or even more than 30 percent if so many other factors are optimized. And at the same time, not only the efficiency, we have to look also for the production cost and also the stability of the devices. So, we hope that very soon it is possible to bring a technology where we can make a perovskite silicon tandem solar cell with a ultra low cost and very highly stable module that can overcome any existing solar module. Thank you so much.